My name is Daniel, and I'm a state park interpreter for California State Parks. Uh, and we're at Point Lobo State National Reserve, one of our 280 state parks here. And I'm coming to you um, via our ports program, our parks online resource for teachers and students. Um, as we're faced with our current situation, this is a way we can still connect with you and you can connect uh, with our California state park system. I'm proud to wear this patch. I like to show this with every program that I lead. And today at Point Lobos, we get to check out something here that maybe not a lot of people know about. And it's a forest that grows within steps of where we are sitting. Now we're in this great pine and cypress forest. It's spectacular as well. But the forest we're gonna find out about today, students or boys and girls or whoever is watching is our ocean forest. It's known as the giant kelp forest. Now, first, before we go on a mini discovery hike, I'm gonna read this story to you. It's short, but full of action. It's called The Hidden Forest. It's by an author named Jeannie Baker. We'll read this story, and then afterwards, we'll go and check out where this giant kelp forest grows here at Point Lobos. We'll keep our eyes open for wildlife. You never know what we might see. We are out in the reserve right now. And we'll talk a little bit about the animals that depend upon this. Now, I know you may have some questions along the way, and there's gonna be a, uh, there is a Q&A feature that you can type your questions into, and we'll do our best to answer those. But, you know, think about those questions for a while because we'll have these, the story to listen to and then some time to uh, explore. So questions might come up a little bit later, but I wanted you to know that there is a way to ask questions, and I'll remind you about that a little bit later. So, all right, everybody, let's begin with our story, The Hidden Forest by Jeannie Baker. I'll read the words on the page and then show you the picture so you know what's going on. All right, here we go. Down in the dark, tangled world of the seaweed, there are big fish and small fish. Ben, he knows that they're there, but time after time only small fish come up in his fish trap. He empties them out. He wants to catch something much bigger. This time, when he tries to raise his fish trap, it will not move, and he yanks at it with all of his strength. All right, so here we see Ben, and sharp eyes might notice those small fish right there at the bottom of his boat that he doesn't really seem to care about. And then this. The true star of the show, everyone. Turn the, to the person next to you and tell them what you think this is. All right, yeah. If you're saying seaweed, you're right. If you're seeing, saying kelp, you're right. Giant kelp is a type of seaweed. And we'll learn more about that as we go on. All right, uh-oh. Suddenly, the boat flips from under him, and he tumbles into the sea. Ben opens his eyes to a blurry underwater world. He feels the slimy kelp slide over him. He senses dark movement. What was that? Looks like some trouble. Hmm. Ben panics. He's afraid some unknown creature will grab at his legs as he scrambles back into the boat. Did he see something or was it his imagination? The kelp clings to his oars and won't let him go. Ben's having quite the morning in the kelp forest. Oh, well, Ben eventually rose free of the kelp and calms down. He must recover his fish trap, but he's gonna need the help of a friend who can dive down to untangle it. And he thinks of his friend, Sophie. Sophie, she's a strong diver, and she agrees to help Ben if he'll come with her to explore the world beneath the waves. Now, Ben, you know, he's a little bit afraid of all this, but he decides to do it 
and he gazes at the surface of the water, but it's like a mirror. He worries about what might be lurking below and cautiously lowers himself into the sea. All right, everyone. What I'd like you to do now is turn to the person next to you and tell them whether you would do what Ben is doing right now. Go into this unknown forest. He's a little bit afraid to go, but he's got this good friend, Sophie, who's gonna show him around. So discuss for a moment if you would do that, if you would do what Ben is doing. All right, pretty exciting. And for right now, you don't have to because we're gonna find out what happens next, what Ben and Sophie discover in this incredible uh, forest. Now prepare yourselves because everything's about to change. To his surprise, Ben finds himself floating above a mysterious underwater forest that sways back and forth with the rolling of the waves. All right, prepare yourself. I introduce to you the giant kelp forest. Look at that. Now I know there's a lot of wows and oohs and ahs. Check out the size of the giant kelp next to Ben and Sophie. All right. Gigantic golden trees of kelp reach up towards the sun. Shafts of sunlight shimmer in their branches. Ben waits anxiously while Sophie untangles the trap. And at last, it's free. Here's another view of this giant kelp forest. And with that uh, fish trap freed up, now it's time to explore. Sophie holds out her hand to Ben and takes him to explore the different kelps growing near the rocky shore. Ben holds onto a piece of bull kelp and rides with it as it sways and stretches with the tide. And when the kelp touches him this time, it feels like velvet swirling against his skin. Check this out. Here we've got Ben and Sophie. And then let's just take a look around here. Sharp eyes might notice a creature on the rocks. It's like we have a lot of sea stars. Oh, and over on this side, look what's swimming through the kelp forest. A school of fish. Because just like the forest on land is home to all kinds of animals, so is the forest in the ocean. Let's see what happens next. Oh, all right. Now, a lot of us know that when an animal blends in with its environment, it helps it survive. Uh, it can help it find its prey, its food, or hide from something that may want to eat it. What's that called? That's right, camouflage. Now, I'm going to show you this picture right here. Ben has dove all the way down to the bottom of the kelp forest, moved over some of the seaweed, and he sees an animal that's camouflaged. I'll start back here. And when you see it, you know, maybe just, you know, whisper it to the person you're with. All right, we're getting closer. I don't know if I can get much closer without making it go blurry. That's right, a crab right there. Another one of the diverse life forms that, are, that lives in the kelp forest. All right, good job. Okay, their journey isn't over yet because Sophie shows Ben how he can hold his breath and dive down into the forest to look for other animals. And here we go. Whoa, look at that. Stingray. And sharp eyes might even notice some of the sea snails, those kind of triangled shaped animals on the kelp. Lots of different life. 
sensing a presence behind him, Ben turns around. And when he turns around, whoa. That's what he sees. A whale, a whale watching him closely glides gently by. Ben is overwhelmed with wonder. Ben and Sophie catch glimpses of its dark gleaming shape rolling and sliding against the kelp as it passes on around the bay. All right, everyone, let's check it out. We've got the boat right there. We've got the whale. And then we've got the giant kelp. Now the story never explains exactly what bumps Ben out of his boat. But go ahead and just raise your hand if you think it could have been the whale that did it. Those of you might recall that he did sense a dark movement when he got bumped out of the boat. So I'm raising my hand too. We'll never know for sure, but it, when we put the clues together, that's what makes sense. All right, let's see how the story ends. Together, they pull up the fish trap and gaze in fascination at what they've caught. But Ben, he sees things differently now. He sees how wonderful these creatures are here in their mysterious hidden world. And he feels like this is where they belong. So Ben opens up his fish trap and lets all the animals go free. So a happy ending for these animals, they all got to go home. And a happy ending to our story, The Hidden Forest, the end. All right, everyone. Now that we know a little bit about this hidden forest, otherwise known as the giant kelp forest, let's go take a look at where it grows. A short walk to where we need to go. So come with me this way. And as we walk along, I will describe what it feels like right now at Point Lobos. The air is cold. It's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about seven degrees Celsius for those of you who measure temperature that way. Uh, the rain has passed, so it's a bit soggy, but it has left us with some clearing skies and virtually no wind. Now here, now that we've gotten to our stop, I will show you where our giant kelp forest grows. Prepare yourselves, here we go. That's right, the Pacific Ocean. You can observe some of the kelp at the top. Some of those, actually that looks more like a bird off in the distance or a harbor seal. It's hard to tell this far off, but both would be here in the kelp forest. Now, Point Lobos has a lot of special things going on. It's got our cypress and pine forest on land. It's got our kelp forest beneath the surface right here. It's a California state park, as well as a marine protected area. We call that an MPA for short. But what that means is this is a safe zone for all the seaweeds and kelps and animals that come within its boundaries. So we don't fish or hunt or take anything from our boundaries. And the hopes that the populations of these animals and kelps will continue to grow and provide and support itself and the food web it's a part of. All right, so you can see it's a, getting to be a very clear and beautiful day. Oh, I, I've got a question from Lennon. Hi, Lennon. My favorite animal in the reserve. Very good question and it changes daily. 
but I would have to say my favorite animal is the, today is the harbor seal because we're starting to see them a lot. And they're pregnant. Mamas are pregnant with their babies. And they will start to give birth within the next few weeks. So it's an exciting time at our reserve. Tandra Erickson has asked, are the purple sea urchins eating the kelp at Point Lobos? And the answer is yes, they are. Um, we do have a lot of sea otters here that are eating those purple sea urchins, as well as some other fish that eat them too. So they're helping to keep the population in balance. So we haven't seen a lot of kelp being devastated or eaten too much of um, by the urchins yet, but we're keeping our eye on it. Excellent question. Oh, all right, Grant's asking me how uh, kelp gets so big. Well, it grows in the same way that trees and plants on land do, by taking the energy of the sun. And then it has big leaves um, that help it absorb that sunlight and it can grow super fast. If everything's working right for that giant kelp, it will grow up to two feet in one day. My goodness, imagine that for a moment. Two feet in one day. Some of you may, you know, ask mom and dad how tall you are and then compare that. And Carlos is asking, what animals do we see the most of? Uh, we will see a lot of the harbor seals and, uh, and birds. You can count on it. But we also, a lot of times, will see the sea otters too. They're off in the distance today. Does kelp have roots like a land forest? Oh, what a great question. In fact, I'm going to take us right on over here and show you um, a little bit about what kelp has as far as roots. We know that plants and, and trees have roots that keep them in place. And giant kelp doesn't but it can stay in place all the same. Come with me and let me show you what I mean. All right, I have some supplies right in here in our whaler's cabin. Let's go in and grab them and check them out. This will give you a, a, a good visual for, uh, for what it looks like for the giant kelp at the bottom. All right, here we go. I thought it was gonna rain everyone, so I set us up all inside, but it turned out to be quite beautiful. Now the question of the moment is, does kelp have roots? The answer is no, but it stays in place, attached to a rock at the bottom of the ocean. And what I present to you is something called a hold fast. It, uh, it's kind of like an anchor that attaches to a rock and the kelp goes up and out of it. Check it out. So imagine if you will, this part of the holdfast attached to a rock at the bottom of the ocean with the giant kelp growing up and out of it. So it's not covered up by sand or anything at the bottom of the ocean. It's on top of a rock, anchors the, the kelp, and the kelp goes up towards the sun to, uh, to grow as big as it possibly can. So good question. All right, let's check out some more of these questions. The largest animal that lives in the kelp forest Boy, there's a lot of big animals that come and visit the kelp forest as they migrate or go out to eat. Um, but one of the biggest animals um, is, the, is the giant, uh, you know, the giant sea bass is something that lives in the kelp forest. Not spotted regularly, but, but they are a, quite a large, um, you know, oh gosh, you know, 500 pound fish that we might find living in the kelp forest. And the water this morning, the temperature, or the question is how warm is the water? And that's about 52 degrees Fahrenheit this morning. And what that is in Celsius is about, gosh, about 10 or 11 degrees uh, Celsius. And there are some logs in the water, Roberto, and there's also some kelp floating. So we're seeing both of those things out there. Good observation. The, the kelp forest uh, surrounds our land here, Jillian, um, all the way around, uh, you know, kind of the trails that we're standing on. And it goes out to about where the, uh, the depth of the water gets to be about 80 feet deep. 
then giant kelp doesn't grow very well. It needs to get that sunlight, and sunlight doesn't go more than about 80 feet deep. So that's how far out you'll see it growing. And uh, how tall does the kelp grow? Well, on average, it can grow to be about 100 feet tall. To give you a, just a perspective on that, check this out. All right, this tree in front of us, is not 100 feet tall, it's about 85 feet tall. So giant kelp can grow taller than the tree before us. And it grows tall and fast, and it makes a forest, just like what we saw Ben and Sophie swimming through. And that forest is home to all kinds of animals. All right, let's see what else. And I apologize if I missed some of your questions. The question from Parker was, was this whaler's cabin used by whalers? And Parker, the answer is no. Um, the, the whaler's cabin was built actually by uh, some Chinese families that landed here in 1851. And they did a lot of different things here. They fished, they collected shells, um, and, and, and had odd jobs to you know, help them survive while they, when they built this structure right here. So, and there were a few other ones too. Uh, whalers, when they came to hunt whales was about 12 or 13 years later. And they set up you know, their community right on over there. So that's where the whalers lived, right over there. So from the history and the research we've done, it, it sounds like whalers never actually lived in this particular cabin, but it was named the Whaler's Cabin years after it became a park, and now it's our museum. So, so uh, uh, Chinese families um, uh, who fished and collect shells and did a lot of other things around here lived in this house, but they weren't whalers. Good question. Oh, Camille's asking, do you ever spend the night with the animals in the forest and are they friendly? Well, Point Lobos is a very special place in that we close our park at night and we turn it over all to the animals. So there's no people here at all um, at nighttime. And we, so the nocturnal animals get a chance to roam this area without the interference of us. Um, and um, they might be friendly, but they're wild animals, so they're always unpredictable. So, um, so I'm not quite sure, but um, it's always good to uh, observe wild animals if you get a chance to see them from a distance. Uh, do animals eat kelp? Yes, they do. Somebody asked about that purple sea urchin earlier, um, that spiky shelled animal that lives at the bottom of the kelp forest, and they eat the kelp. In fact, there's another animal that eats the kelp. Let me show you its shell. Come with me this way. All right. I'm gonna switch our camera around so everybody can see the shell of this animal that also eats the kelp. Look at that. Let's just kind of sneak up on this shell to really look at it. Now this is an animal that has just one shell. So we have a whole bunch of just this animal's single shell. And it's a flattened sea snail that lives at the bottom of the kelp forest known as the abalone. It's a fun name. In fact, go ahead and say it out loud, abalone. All right. Now, that's an animal that eats the kelp also. All right, now let me check some other, oh, there we go. Sorry about that, everyone. Got kind of caught up on the door. Let's uh, check out some other questions. Camille asked, do we feed the animals? And, and the answer is no. Um, we're not a zoo, but a wild, you know, a park where wildlife lives. So what we do is we protect the food source by not fishing or hunting or collecting anything here. And that way that we, try and make sure that the animals get enough of the food that they need. Oh, where does the blue whale live? Well, 
sometimes throughout the year, students, we will see the blue whale swimming um, kind of on the west side of our, of our park here. Um, so they live in all of the oceans and the, where they can swim and find food. And so sometimes we'll even see them here. And they're usually beyond the kelp forest, a little bit farther out. All right, what's the tallest tree, Araceli is asking. And around here, um, our trees are, are beautiful and magnificent and incredible to look at. In fact, let me just show you some of the trees that are in front of us right here. Wonderful shapes twisted by the wind that comes off the ocean. And none of them are really over 100 feet tall. So we might have one or two that are about 100 feet tall, but they're all about that height. Now, just down the road and up the road, the world's tallest tree lives, and that's the coast redwood. And they will grow, you know, we would still be moving our camera up to see them, and they grow almost 400 feet tall. So here we've got these beautiful shaped trees, and those Monterey cypress is a rare tree only growing naturally here at Point Lobos and across the bay. All right, let's see here. What types of birds are migrating through your area right now? Well, what we have noticed is things have kind of moved on already. Um, so we had some, uh, some special uh, Hearman's goals come here in winter, but they've moved on. And we also have um, the brown pelican. Um, uh, that was wintering here, but they just moved on as well. The, one of the other birds we're seeing come through is the Townsend's Warbler, a small songbird with a yellow, bright yellow face. And Nolan's asking, did the whalers have dogs? That's a great question, Nolan. Um, and my, my answer is, um, I'm not sure. Maybe um, they did. Um, in all of the old photos I've seen, I haven't seen a pet dog, but that doesn't mean they weren't there. So I hope so, because what a great thing to have out in this wild land that you live far from home. These whalers came um, halfway around the world from the Azores, some uh, islands in the Atlantic Ocean. So to have a pet might have been something nice to have. All right, Maggie wants to know if Bigfoot is around, and maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. I haven't seen any uh, evidence, but there's always talk. Is kelp an invasive plant, Darren is asking. And this giant kelp here is not a, an invasive plant. It's got some very strict uh, requirements for growth, and that's cold, nutrient-rich water um, with uh, an emphasis on the nutrient-rich. Nutrients do a lot better in cold water um, and rise to the top. Um, for easy access for the animals and, and the planktons and the kelp that need it. So, uh, so the kelp is not an invasive species here, but there are some kelps that are invasive. They haven't, they're not here at Point Lobos, but in other areas of the world. Oh, what's the smallest animal we have found here, Roberto would like to know. Gosh, there's a lot of small animals. In the kelp forest, we see this tiny little kelp bug called the kelp isopod. Um, and it can be about this small or about, you know, up to that big. So that's one of the smallest animals. And then a lot of insects on land too are quite small. And Camille wants to know if there's alligators here. No alligators here in this uh, cold water of, of central California. And have we seen any whales today? Um, I haven't heard of any whale sightings today. But just the other day, Emerson, we were seeing whales um, still swimming south, it appeared. So we think they were the gray whales. Um, when the gray whales come up to take a breath at the surface of the water, when they exhale, their double blowhole makes kind of a heart shape. And that's what we were seeing, this kind of heart-shaped puff of air, you know, of exhalation. So, um, so we were seeing them the other day. And Tamara wants to know about some nocturnal animals. Well, we've got a lot of nocturnal animals from raccoons, um, possums, gray fox and coyote, um, even bobcat and, and mountain lion. What sharks live there? Well, right here in our kelp forest, 
there's a couple of sharks that actually live there, the leopard shark and the swell shark. Those are two that you would find right here in the kelp forest. All right, and Nolan wanted to know more about those roots. Well, um, the roots, remember, they're the, you might have tuned in a little bit later, they are, um, the holdfast attaches to a rock, and so they're not buried at all under, under the bottom of the ocean. In fact, we can even take a walk right over here and I'll show you one more time what the holdfast, the very bottom of the kelp looks like. It's a root-like structure. It's the best way to say it. I call it an anchor. It's like an anchor attached to a rock where the kelp grows up. So this is what the, what the bottom of the kelp looks like. It's the closest thing to roots that it has. All right. What is the strangest thing that you have seen? Oh, uh, of a sea animal. Gosh, you know, jellies are quite fascinating and, and uh, uh, very strange. So there's jellies and there's something called a tunicate, which looks like a jelly. We have a tunicate here that almost looks like a, like a human heart that's transparent that you can see through. Um, and it lives here in the kelp forest. It's usually blown in by the wind. Um, so jellies and tunicates, I think, are the strangest animals I've seen. And Kim from San Diego is asking, are any of these trees Torrey pines? And oh, Torrey pines are one of my favorite trees, but the pines that we have here are called Monterey pines. Um, so they're a little bit different. With the Torrey pine, they're, they've got these long needles and, and bundles of five. Um, and here our, our Monterey pine is much smaller. Our needles are smaller and they're in bundles of three, just for a few different. All right, what is a warbler? Uh, a warbler is a, a type of bird that um, you know, eats, uh, I, I, I believe seeds is what I, I've observed them eating and they sing a lot and they come through here every winter and they've got these, well, there's a lot of different kinds, but the kind that come through here, the Townsend's warblers have these bright yellow faces and they're, they're quite striking to look at. What did whaler people travel with? They, um, they traveled by boat mostly, and so, and that's how they hunted is, is with uh, um, being out in boats. And uh, Stefan or Stephen would like to know how big the park is. Well, we are standing here on land, my friend. It's uh, about 550 acres of a park out in the ocean in our marine protected areas. It's about 9,000 acres. You're thinking, well, gosh, 550 acres, 9,000 acres, okay, lots and lots of acres, but what is an acre? Let's put this into a language we can understand. Point Lobos, on land and in the ocean, our park is about 13,000 full-size football fields big. And that's American football. So um, that's how big our park is, about 13,000 American, American football fields big. Oh, and Roberto asks a very good question about can people fish here? And this being a, a marine protected area, uh, we don't fish, hunt, or collect anything here. So it's a fishing free zone. Um, but there are areas nearby where you can fish. We want to, when the when a marine protected areas got put into place, we want to balance the needs of, of people as well as the needs of the ecosystem. And so there's areas where you can fish and areas where you can't. All right. Well, I would love to show you some animals, Elsa, um, and I'm keeping my eyes open. That's the thing about being out in the wild. You never know what might show up, but if something comes by, you better believe I'm gonna show you. And yes, sometimes there are dolphins that live right out here in our kelp forest. So why don't we just go ahead and take a look and maybe we can spot some things over this way. Sharp eyes might notice probably off in the distance for you, but that is a harbor seal poking its nose up. Are there any predators living there and what do they eat? Well, the harbor seal is indeed a predator and it will eat a lot of things in the kelp forest from fish to octopus. And the biggest animal I've seen today, Stephen, is a uh, uh, a harbor seal. And Nolan's wanting to know about some sea otters. And I don't see any from where we're standing, everyone. 
but they're out there. This is a prime habitat for them. The kelp forest gives the sea otter everything that they need. And why are the pine trees different here? Well, the Monterey pine has, uh, has adapted to growing with this climate and soil. So it's used to the weather and the soil that it, that it grows in. Oh, Sabrina, how do you become a park ranger? That's an excellent question. Well, becoming a park ranger, you've got to want to help uh, protect these beautiful resources that we have. And then go to college and study something related to parks. It can be uh, sciences or law enforcement, administration. There's lots of different things. And find out what you want to do to be a, a park ranger. Law enforcement is a great, great thing to, to learn. I'm a park interpreter. So I've studied more of the science and education parts of things. And I graduated from college and I got fortunate enough to be hired with California State Park. Volunteering is another great way to get to know your parks. You get to find out what a ranger does. So you, if you have a California State Park near where you live, you might want to check in on their volunteer opportunities. How many divers use the park each year? Oh, that's a great question. Many, uh, many weekends we are full with divers. Um, I'm not quite sure the number, but you know, my guess is well over a thousand divers use it a, a year. And Nolan wants to know how big the Pacific Ocean is. This small part that we're looking at here called Whaler's Cove is part of the Pacific Ocean. And the Pacific Ocean is 64 million square miles big. You could take all seven continents and put them into the Pacific Ocean and still have a lot of room left over. It's big. Oh, some of the dolphins that we see are the, the common dolphin and the white-sided dolphin and, and the Rizzo's dolphin as well. And they get to be about five to six feet long. And Curtis wants to know if I have swam down deep in the kelp. Well, I'm not a scuba diver, Curtis, but I am a snorkeler. So I've, I've kind of gone, you know, towards the top of the kelp and in shallow waters towards the bottom, but I haven't gone very deep. But I do have a mini ROV named Moby. And it, I can control it and it can be my eyes going into the kelp forest. So I've filmed some things with Moby, my mini ROV, as my eyes. And if you want to check out some of that footage, you can go to the YouTube channel called Point Lobos Interpreter. You can see some of that underwater kelp forest footage taken right here at Point Lobos. Oh, Roberto's asking about glow-in-the-dark sea animals like jellyfish. And yes, we have some of those speckled spectacled jellyfish that kind of blink on and off like a disco party light. Um, and so we do have those out there as well. I haven't seen them this season, but last spring I sure did. All right. So why don't we just take a walk right on over here and check things out? All right, here we go. Thank you for all those questions, everyone. I really appreciate it. As you can tell, Point Lobo is a very special spot right here. Hey there. All right. So, let, oh, we got a few more questions, it looks like. Let's take a look. All right. Um, yeah, the uh, way to see some of the movie footage would be to uh, go to the YouTube channel Point Lobos Interpreter. 
Um, there's lots of footage there that you can see uh, the kelp forest and what it looks like. All right. And there's a lot of bird nests, Stephen. Um, in fact, let's see if we can even maybe take a, a, a quick look right on over here. Um, some, of the, some of the rocks over here are nesting sites for our seagulls. They make their bird nests right on top of rocks. Okay, we'll take one last look at our beautiful kelp forest here at Point Lobos State Natural Reserve. And Stephen, that rock in front of us is a nesting site, sometimes for the seagulls or for the cormorants. Last summer, seagulls had their nests there and they had three babies that we got to watch grow and fledge, which means they left the nest and went off to live their life. All right, with that, everybody, I wanna thank you for joining me here at Point Lobo State Natural Reserve on the central coast of California, one of our amazing California state parks. Now we're gonna be doing a home learning program like this uh, throughout the next month or so. So please you know, uh, keep in touch about what our schedule is and we'll do the same. And I wanna go ahead and give you one last view. of this beautiful reserve we have here at Point Lobos. And thanks again, interpreter Daniel saying bye and be safe.